let us uh, discuss today about uh, fir filter design <coughs> before i start this topic let me tell you that th these lectures are only object oriented approach so core approach or uh, depth into the concept can be uh, discussed in the later uh, lessons because some of the students are asking for in depth uh, uh, concept coverage also so that video lectures will be covered uh, in the later later sessions so for that you can please subscribe such that uh, you will get the further uploaded uh, videos you will get the uh, information about further uploaded videos okay now this uh, this lessons are initially uh, keeping in mind the examination uh, approach and try to give you object oriented approach only right now today let us see about uh, fir filter design methods <coughs> basically there are three types of fir filter design methods so number one is uh, fourier series method fourier series method so when i am considering fourier series method uh, point to be noted is we we consider uh, a signal which is a periodic a periodic signal so considered in the interval minus pi to pi right so for this periodic signal when i consider a uh, in the interval minus pi to pi suppose if i consider for example if i am considering uh, if i want to design a filter so which is a, a gate function so this is a gate function now suppose this is a cut off frequency minus omega to plus omega c now let us assume that uh, this is from minus pi so this is up to plus pi now what we understand here this is the frequency uh, response that is h of omega we can write h of e power j omega we can write so this is the frequency omega so whenever you talk about frequency omega this is a uh, continuous signal okay continuous frequency so we understand the graph is also continuous signal now between minus pi to minus omega the amplitude here is zero and between minus omega to plus omega c the amplitude is one and plus omega c to pi the amplitude is zero so we are we are interested to talk about we consider the signal only between so this interval minus pi to pi so now when i when i want uh, to know this is a signal uh, in uh, frequency when i want the corresponding signal in time domain if i take discrete time domain so frequency to time domain if i want to consider so here frequency is continuous and uh, uh, time is i want to find time is uh, disc, uh, discrete suppose time discrete i have a function suppose h uh, okay now frequency is uh, continuous so discrete time this is a discrete time signal this is a continuous time frequency right so discrete time to continuous uh, frequency if i want to convert time to frequency if i am converting we apply discrete time fourier transform dtft so this is the arm work see from time to frequency this is the arm work we are going from left to right now frequency to time here we from frequency i want to convert to time from frequency to time is from right to left i want to come from frequency to time if i want we apply in uh, idf inverse uh, discrete time fourier transform so this is a simple uh, point of technique we apply right so here so when i apply uh, so for this signal what i am trying to do now here when i am applying uh, uh, idft idft to this continuous time signal i get a, a signal i try to get a signal which is it is i want to get in discrete time um, this is a discrete time discrete time dts signal okay so now this is frequency response uh, when i apply i'll get a impulse response right so now we know very well for a gate function when we apply uh, idft we try to get a we try to get a, a sync function or sample function right so the sample function is of this form so so this is discrete time we are taking a sample function so this is the sample function this is a sample function like this uh, again 
apply this, the sample function will get. This is uh, this three this period uh, this range is from frequency range is from minus pi to pi. Here time interval range is from minus infinite to so plus infinite, right? Now what we try to do here, I want a, a finite impulse response. So this is the h of n. I am getting this is impulse response. Now this is not finite. This is the minus infinite infinite. This is the infinite impulse response. I I R. So when I want finite impulse response, what we try to do? We try to uh, take. Uh, we try to truncate. We try to truncate the signal uh, between uh, because what, whatever the number of uh, number of values I want or number of stages I want. Okay, based on the number of stages, number of values we want, we try to uh, truncate the signal between this range. What is how do you get this range? Suppose general in general expert, we try to take n samples. I am trying to take n samples. Okay, so the range we try to do is from zero to n my capital n minus one or n samples or n stages. Now since this signal, if you observe, this is equally distributed on either side. It is symmetrically distributed about the origin. Okay, so now <clears throat> I get the n samples I want. Means uh, uh, I want uh, half cycles to that side and half cycle when I include zero. So n minus one samples uh, on either side. So in n minus, so I can take n minus one by two to the right side and n minus one by two to the left side. So to the left side means the negative. I take negative. So two. So this is the range I take. So n samples can be earlier case when it is not. Uh, Either side distributed. N samples will be distributed as zero to n minus one. Now, how would point to be noted? N samples <coughs> when I take uh, so this n minus one when I, another uh, zero also is one more sample. If I take n minus one plus one is total n samples. So n minus one half times and n minus one another half times. So overall, it is uh, n minus one and another zero. If I add n minus one plus zero, because minus uh, n minus one by two to Plus or minus one by two. There is zero included. So if I take this interval, so now I am taking uh, this interval is minus of n minus one by two, and this interval I am taking this as this interval I am taking it as plus n minus one by two, right? So this between this interval minus of n minus one by two plus n minus one by two, I am considering n samples. So we are trying to truncate the signal, uh, which is in. Uh, In the range minus infinite to plus infinite, so to this uh, n samples where the range is, uh, I am taking n samples or n stage from minus of n minus one by two to plus n minus one by two. Since uh, the signal uh, impulse response is uh, equally distributed on either sides, right? Now the point to be noted when I, you know, we here uh, here what we now this signal from minus of n minus one by two to plus n minus one by two when it truncated, this becomes. Uh, The impulse response, which is finite range, because it has only n samples, so it is finite samples. So this one, what we try to do now? So this is the distributed on uh, positive side, positive n and negative n. So this is a non-causal system. It is a non-causal. The signal is distributed on either side because it is non-causal. So non-causal systems are non-practical. We cannot uh, design these uh, signals. Non-practical systems. So to make it practical, what I try to do now, whatever the signal I have on the negative side, I'll shift to right side by that many units. So negative side, this is the minus of n minus one by two. I shift to right side. If I shift this right side, now I'll get this uh, whatever this I have. Now this zero. If I shift to right side, this becomes now uh, n minus one by two. Okay. Now this is our uh, this origin. So I can try to take. I am trying to shift the signal. I am trying to shift uh, the signal. So now this is signal is shifted from zero n minus one, and another is another n minus one. It is n minus one by two to n minus one, right? It is shifted to right side. So minus n minus one by two when I shift to right side by n minus one by two it becomes zero. Zero when I shift to right side zero plus n minus one by two becomes n minus one by two. Now n minus one by two another n minus one by two if I shift uh, that becomes n minus one. So this signal now this is shifted or this is uh, seen on only right side so this is a causal signal. So what I try to do now is whatever the signal is there I apply 
okay this for this signal when i apply here uh, z transforms i will get h of z and for this signal if i apply z transforms so in time domain shifting in z domain for this h of z whatever it is there so so multiplication so what is the property we have time domain shifting if i am shifting in time domain when i am coming to z domain or frequency domain z is nothing but e power j omega so when i shift it this is this is uh, time domain signal corresponding uh, corresponding uh, frequency domain signal is if i apply z transform the frequency domain signal so here this is a shifted version this is h of n this is h of n what we have seen here this is right hand shifted so h of n minus i am shifting to n minus 1 by 2 so n minus of capital n minus 1 by 2 this is shifted signal to the right so shifting in time domain so we say in frequency domain or in z domain it is z power so whatever the value i shifted so minus of this value so minus of n minus 1 by 2 okay so this uh, whatever uh, signal i have this in frequency domain now now this signal if i try to take uh, the if i write this as some h dash of z and if i try to take the magnitude of this signal okay this, this we are calling it as a frequency response and this is frequency response so i am taking magnitude of this frequency response this uh, h dash of z uh, h of omega i can uh, write z is nothing but e power j omega i can write uh, h dash of z or h of omega if i plot uh, with respect to omega okay uh, the signal the magnitude of this uh, frequency response frequency response uh, magnitude the frequency response magnitude versus this frequency this is frequency and magnitude of this frequency response plot so if i am trying to design a, a low pass filter okay so what how do we get the plot approximately roughly we get the plot so plot like this so what we observe here is so in between uh, so this is the pass band signal i can see some signal this is the graph approximately for a low pass filter and uh, this is the stop band so what we find in stop band is uh, we observe some ripples so these ripples are obtained these ripples we observe this is uh, not undesirable so these ripples are obtained because of uh, right shift of the signal abruptly to n minus 1 by 2 units because we are shifting to right right by n minus 1 by 2 units to make it causal because of sh abrupt shift in uh, right uh, so there are some ripples observed in stop band okay so this uh, is a uh, this ripples which are observed we are we are discussing uh, we are coming uh, to a point called as uh, Gibbs phenomenon okay Gibbs phenomenon so we discuss uh, about this now as an introduction I am trying to say this Gibbs phenomenon now this challenge or this drawback whatever we find in Fourier series method in designing a low pass filter uh, FIR low pass filter uh, by using Fourier, trans, Fourier series method this challenge or this drawback can be overcome in the second method called as windowing method windowing method okay so after that we will try to see another third one third method is nothing but so this is frequency sampling frequency sampling method sampling method so always as we discussed the frequency is in continuous type now i want uh, i want find it uh, so this frequency h of omega h of e power omega so h of e power j omega h of omega this is continuous type i want finite impulse response so i want to uh, make it to finite so to make it finite uh, what is the method i am following is we are trying to sample this so so we are sampling this frequency so we are calling it as sampling frequency method okay now uh, in the next lesson this is just introduction what we have seen in the next lesson we will see uh, what is uh, 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 procedure or uh, procedure steps to find uh, Fourier series method okay so let me just uh, uh, give you a fast review so to design a finite impulse response filter design or FIR filter design we have three methods Fourier series method 
windowing method next is frequency sample method in the windowing method we have simple methods called as the triangular method rectangular method hamming method hamming method like that there are some simple uh, five six methods are there we try to see what is the significance of that uh, windowing method then next we try to see uh, what is the frequency sampling method right so in four years series methods as we discussed uh, what is the simple points we have discussed is so so given uh, so first is a, a desired filter transfer function desired transfer function from this uh, we have uh, we found uh, from frequency to time domain we found h of desired impulse response this is impulse response which is desired so from frequency to time so i we discussed the uh, idtft inverse discrete fourier transform from this this is in the interval minus infinity infinite this is infinite range impulse response to to get uh, finite range so minus of n minus 1 by 2 to so plus n minus 1 by 2 to get uh, this uh, impulse response in this finite range okay we are considering this this infinite samples uh, in that we are truncating so we are truncating uh, trun truncating the signals to get this n samples n samples so once we get h of n now what we try to do is this h of n we are trying to find uh, z transform and uh, we get h of z and from h of z whatever we are getting so so this h of z uh, this is a non causal signal we have shifted to the right and we shift to the right in z in what way by z z power minus of n minus 1 by 2 so this uh, so first step what we have done is uh, this is this given is the transfer function the desired transfer function desired transfer function Next, we applied uh, inverse DDFT and we found it desired impulse response HD of n. Then a second, st uh, third step is uh, we found we truncated this signal, uh, taking n samples from the range minus of n minus one by two plus n minus one by two. We got H of n. The next step is uh, we found Z. We applied Z transform and we got H of Z. And then this year this is a non-causal signal we to make it causal we shifted to the right side by n minus 1 by 2 so we are shifting in uh, time domain is nothing but multiplied by uh, z z power or uh, multiplied by exponential of uh, that n minus 1 by 2 units right side so the minus so this whatever we get uh, we are considering this as h dash of n h dash of z sorry so this h dash of z the next step we are uh, trying to take is we are trying to take the magnitude uh, of this h dash of z then next uh, we are trying to plot we are trying to plot this magnitude of this h dash of z uh, versus uh, this frequency so this is what uh, we we are trying to find so these are the uh, different steps we found first is from transfer function to idft first step next step is uh, truncating uh, second step and third step is finding out the transform and fourth step is uh, multiplying by uh, z for n minus 1 by 2. So, and uh, fifth step is uh, whatever it is, we are trying to find uh, uh, frequency response. Frequency, frequency response. The next step is, last step is, we are trying to plot this uh, magnitude of this frequency response for this for versus this frequency, right? We will discuss about these steps in detail uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.